as the early morning sun rays filter through the canopy of the tropical rainforest the denizens of the jungle go about their daily chores the forest reverberates to the call of the lion-tailed macaque calling its mates i am documenting the endangered lion-tailed macaques it has led me to the anamalai hills in the indira gandhi wildlife sanctuary in the biodiversity rich western ghats The Western Ghats is home to myriad species of flora and fauna and is recognized as a global biodiversity hotspot. Nestled in the Palparai range of the Anamalai Hills at an altitude of about 1000 meters above mean sea level is a small town called Valparai. In 1864 the government gave permission to establish plantations. The plantations and town came up clear filling the pristine rainforests. Today almost all of the mountains have been colonized by the tea estates on cursory looks they appear picturesque presenting a lawn like green appearance however if one looks closer one can find exotic species like wattle and eucalyptus planted for the fuel wood needs by the plantation owners However, not everything is lost. In the midst of the tea plantations and human habitations, there are still patches of pristine rainforest and secondary forests, harboring large carnivores like tigers and leopards, herbivores like elephants, gaurs, barking deer, sambars, nilgiri thars, and primates like nilgiri langurs and lion-tailed macaques. and many more endangered species among all the large primates of the area the lion-tailed macaque is endemic to the wet evergreen forests of the western ghats it is listed as endangered in the iucn red list the total number of mature lion-tailed macaques is estimated to be less than 2500 and no subpopulation in an area has more than 250 mature individuals in fact the fragmentation of habitat due to tea estates human habitations and clear felling of trees has led to very small groups with often only one mature male this leads to reducing genetic diversity and increasing their susceptibility to diseases the main food of lion-tailed macaques is ripe fruits berries seeds gum and resins which are rich in simple carbohydrates Watching the lion-tailed macaque place the jackfruit on the branch while eating gives us an idea about their intelligence.
They also feast on invertebrates found in the leaf litter, termites and other insects found in the bark of trees. They are known to raid honeycombs by swiftly dislodging it from a tree and running away from the bees to safety. Unlike the common langur and nilgiri langur, the lion-tailed macaques can't eat leaves as digesting leaves requires a complex stomach. This evolutionary adaptation has resulted in the lion-tailed macaques tied down to the tropical rainforest habitat where fruits and insects can be found throughout the year. The lion-tailed macaques spend a lot of time grooming themselves to keep themselves free of pests. With the growth of plantations and human settlements, the habitat is shrinking and poses severe challenges to the lion-tailed macaque. Perhaps, sensing the changing reality, the lion-tailed macaques are doing their best to adapt. The road to Falparai cuts across the forest and brings the lion-tailed macaques in contact with people and over a period of time, due to their inquisitive nature, growing human settlements, and due to tourists feeding the lion-tailed macaques, they have become habituated to humans. They come close to vehicles expecting food. I observed a unique behavior. The lion-tailed macaques climbed over my Tata Safari and started licking the windshield and the glass windows. Perhaps, watching the reflection was an interesting experience for them. Two of them even engaged in opportunistic mating on top of my safari till they were disturbed by another. Since lion-tailed macaques require a series of mountings before ejaculation, any disruption by a dominant female or a competitor will lead to the effort going waste. Their survival instincts have forced them to forage on the ground from garbage dumped near the human settlements. They often chew plastics and other harmful ways. Alas, the lion-tailed macaques, an endangered species, has been reduced to a domesticated scavenging animal. The last frontier has been breezed. We have subjugated all other species. Perhaps, to show a token protest, this lion-tailed macaque is pulling down the billboards brazenly struck on a tree. The tea estates, which form a major part of Valparai, use synthetic pesticides and fertilizers, thereby polluting the numerous streams that originate from here. Pesticides also wipe away many species that form part of diet of the lion-tailed macaques. The Ministry of Chemicals and Fertilizers conducted trials of neem-based pesticides in Valparai, and it had produced excellent results. It also increased regeneration, thereby removing the need for fertilizers as well. Unfortunately, there is no lobby to champion the cause of neem-based pesticide. Lion-tailed macaques have got a good sense of smell. They sniff and decide whether the item is edible. However, their sense of smell cannot rescue them from pesticide residues in the fruits and insects. The impact of pesticides consumed by the lion-tailed macaques is yet to be studied in detail.
there is an unplanned and unrestrained expansion of Valparai. In 1994, Valparai was a special grade town panchayat. In 2004, it was upgraded to third grade municipality. And in 2010, it was again upgraded to a selection grade municipality. However, due to lack of civic infrastructure, uncontrolled littering, Valparai looks like any of our mismanaged big cities. Fresh water streams and rivers have been turned into gutters by garbage and sea waste disposal. To make matters worse, a large number of slums have come up in the private lands. Illegal conversion of agricultural land into residential areas have become rampant. This leads to shrinking of the lion-tailed macaque's habitat and has resulted in lack of fruits in major parts of the year. The lion-tailed macaque is trying to adapt to the situation by raiding the houses of people for food. Research studies have shown that close proximity to humans can lead to transmission of diseases to the lion-tailed macaques for which they have no defense. The shrinking habitat has also resulted in lack of trees with large branches. Without the canopy cover, the lion-tailed macaques have to come down from the treetops and cross the road. boom in tourism to Valparai has led to increased traffic on the road and that has resulted in fatalities as well. NCF, a local NGO, has tied bamboo on treetops on both sides of the road to help the lion-tailed macaques cross the road without getting down from the trees. The road to Falparai also gives rise to another behavior of the lion-tailed macaque. When the metal road gets warm, the lion-tailed macaques prefer to roll over it to get rid of pests. Play fights, mating as well as false mating behaviors are often seen. This increases the chances of being run over by speeding vehicles. Despite the traffic sign to slow down, the vehicles continue to drive at high speeds in the winding roads. This road passing from earlier check post to Valparai has got 40 hairpin bends. In many places, the width of the road is 6 to 7 meters. Herpetofana find it difficult to cross such a wide road and get killed by speeding vehicles. The traffic on the road is not only harmful to the lion-tailed macaques, but also to large mammals. Even elephants struggle to cross the roads and it gives rise to conflicts. Gods with adult males weighing more than a ton also find it difficult to cross the road. They need to wait for a long time, allowing the vehicles to pass before they can cross. Nilgiri thar, an endangered species, according to the IUCN Red List, is endemic to the Western Ghats. Though they are sure-footed and can climb the steep slopes easily, dodging the speedy vehicles is an uphill climb even for them. The smaller size of the lesser carnivores and the herpetofauna and macaques makes the road kills less noticeable from moving vehicles. 
Nevertheless, the many road kills of mongoose, leopard cat, palm civet, small Indian civet, porcupine, Indian pitta, babbler, seal tail snake, ornate flying snake, python, calotus, and many others makes this a veritable killing field. To reduce road kills, awareness has to be improved for truck drivers, lorry drivers, car drivers, and auto rickshaw drivers. Forest department should impose speed limit, and also uh, night traffic should be reduced. For widening of roads, passing through tiger reserves, one needs to obtain permission from the Ministry of Environment and Forest. Most of the times, roads are illegally widened using the alibi of maintenance work after rains. These excavators leave behind scars on the hillside that will stand as mute spectators to the dance of death by the speeding vehicles. No one is certain for how long the lion-tailed macaques can continue their precarious existence. If we have to save the lion-tailed macaque, then we need to save their habitat. We need to plant specific tree species to supplement the existing fruit-bearing trees. Ecological restoration of degraded habitats needs to be done to establish connectivity between the isolated lion-tailed macaque populations. Ensure tea estates adopt organic farming restrict unbridled expansion of towns like Valparai, enforce speed limits and restrict movement of traffic in the night, ban use of plastics in the area and create waste treatment facilities. If we take these steps to save the lion-tailed macaque, then gores, elephants, leopards, tigers, nilgirithar and many other endangered animals will get a respite. Freshwater resources would be protected as well. Will the call of the lion tailed macaque continue to reverberate in the jungles of the Valparai range? If we don't act today, generations to come will hold us responsible 